Hello, this is David Nutt. I'm Chair of Drug Science. And I want to welcome you to our Ask David Anything series of questions. Ramsey from Bath asks, What is my opinion on self-medicating depression and anxiety with weed? If it helps, is this something he would encourage? And do I ever think that weed will ever be legal recreationally in the UK? Well, let's start with the second one first. Uh, I think it's inevitable that cannabis will become a, a legal drug in the UK. I'm hoping it's going to happen in my lifetime, which hopefully will be within you know, five or ten years. You know, I'm 68 now, so I'm trying to make, trying to make 70, maybe 80, but uh, it would be a great day if cannabis was recreationally available. I think it will come because I think the fact that so many other countries in the world are moving in that direction reassures people. We now have this 10 American states, over 100 million Americans have access to recreational marijuana. The whole of Canada, well, that's uh, 30 million people. We're seeing that it doesn't create mayhem and havoc. And if anything, it seems to reduce the use of more harmful drugs such as alcohol and opiates. So I think this will come in the UK, and as I say, I hope within a decade. The issue of self-medication is a more complex one. There's no question that people are self-medicating with drugs like cannabis, and some benefit, but some probably don't. I would much prefer that cannabis as a medicine was properly evaluated by, by experts. Uh, it may well be that cannabis could have a role in some forms of depression. It certainly seems to have a role in some forms of anxiety, particularly post-traumatic stress disorder, particularly nightmares, but also maybe in other forms of anxiety. So I would like to see, and drug science is trying to set up, expert groups which can work together using a common methodology to begin to evaluate the potential use of different forms of cannabis, different balanced strains with different ratios of cannabidiol and THC, to see if we can collect over the next few years a reasonable data set that will help encourage other doctors to to use cannabis appropriately when we have demonstrated its efficacy. So yes, people will always self-medicate, but it's very, you know, you have to be careful that you don't run into problems of dependence and uh, and also avoiding access to other medicines which might help because it's possible that cannabis could augment the effect of uh, traditional antidepressants for instance. We've now seen uh, in the USA just recently that S-ketamine, which is a, a form of ketamine that's given through a nasal spray, that's now got li a license as an add-on to antidepressant treatments. And it may be that combinations is the better way forward. But again, some people will self-medicate, and in that case, it would be useful if they were to communicate particularly important benefits. And you can do that in a number of ways. You know, you can write to drug science, you can write to me. You can go onto the Global Drug Survey and answer questions there. Because the more data we can collect about the benefits of, of drugs like cannabis, the faster we're going to get it rolled out uh, as a medicine in our country. If you like my answer, please leave a review and a rating on your podcast app. For tickets for our live podcast on psychedelics on the evening of the 13th of November in London, go to the drugscience.org.uk website. You'll also find a lot of very useful information there. And of course, you can tweet me at ProfDavidNutt or hashtag AskDavidAnything to get your questions answered.